Good evening. Very neat. So I wanted to review a book. And the book I wanted to review today is um, this is a Norwegian translation and the Norwegian translation is named Chakra Mat by Diana M. Minish. Here's how it looks. But it is a translation. Let me just check what it is named in English. The original title is Chakra Food for Optimum Health. So that is Chakra Food for Optimum Health. Now this Norwegian version is a uh, hardback. I don't know if the original English version is. But yeah. Now what is this book? This book is basically a guide for how to incorporate <coughs> idea of chakras and chakra therapy in what you eat. Now, it's not that simple as just eating food is uh, the color of whatever chakra you're trying to uh, strengthen, but that, that is included in here too, ideas of what sort of foods have what sort of colors, because eating carrots will uh, strengthen your hara chakra for example, and purple plums will uh, strengthen your third eye and so on and so forth so but those guides are useful so yeah it's a fairly thick book this edition is let me see 347 pages 348 pages, including the index. Now, what's in here? It is, um, it's a foreword, and it's uh, one uh, general chapter on the chakras and how the colors is a part of our being, and uh, another foreword sort of thing forward how to read this book thing and there is then there's chapter one vibrations in food and the spirit is eaten in I I'm not sure how what the original titles for these are but what mean the spirits is eaten in it like the intentions they're eaten with so it's basically how food have various sorts of energies and how the way you eat it the, the your mindset while you eat it plays a role. And then there is uh, chapter 2, the dancing chakras, which is basically about the chakras, because you need some general knowledge of those to use this book. And chapter 3, discover the topics of the chakras, which is more basic knowledge of the chakras and so on. And then there are individual chapters for what foods are good for the individual chakra. And I like that because if I want to, let's say, strengthen my um, um, my um, Hera chakra, I uh, will just go to chapter 5 here, which is page 97. 97 and then I can read about what sort of uh, internal organs are associated with it um, a, a quick list of correspondences like you have and uh, the Hara Chakra is um, is associated with water the create uh, creativity emotions the color orange sexuality relationships, the circle, uh, polarities, joy, movement, the moon, and um, <coughs> togetherness, or unification. And uh, yeah, then there are some information on, well, how do you know if this chakra is out of balance? it's pretty big these chapters and 
how to strengthen various forms of the chakras, uh, it goes into some depth because it's not just, oh, if this chakra is out of order, then do some, do that, do that. Uh, it talks about if this aspect of the chakra is out of balance, then you can do that. If that aspect of the chakra is out of balance, you can do that, and how to identify what uh, uh, aspects of the chakra is out of is out of balance. So yeah, it is pretty big. And what and there are some sections on in each of these chapters about parts of your anatomy, like um, <coughs> excuse me, like these are the organs that's associated with the heart chakra, the bladder, the hips, the um, kidneys. The intestines, the, the big intestines, and the, um, the female um, reproductive anatomy. So yeah, and then there are of course, and um, I said like how do you how should you feel when eating these foods to know that it's working advice on what food to eat, how to eat it, because that's also important when you're eating for something spiritually, not, and that this goes for basic, um, basic uh, kitchen magic as well. Um, you put energies into the food, but it will be a lot more powerful if you also eat it while ha holding a magical um, intention. So, yeah, and um, yeah, so there's enormous amounts of information how, and not just lists of what food, but what sort of fish, how fish interact with this, how various sorts of pets interact with this chakra. The book goes in a lot of depth. So let's just see how many pages each chakra gets. Uh, basically, chapter 5, which is just about the Hara Chakra, goes from page 97, yeah, page 97, to page 126. So that's quite a few, that's quite a few pages. And it, like, and it really goes, it has whole sections on what what uh, how is meat what sort of meats are associated with it um how can you cook it is these aren't just recipes these are information the information like how does fish affect this chakra what can you do with fish to make this chakra affected such and such way that's why i like this book i have seen books that are just oh this recipe is good for that this recipe is good for that but this gives you the basic information so that you can make these recipes yourself or just use the recipes you already have because you might know that fish boiled with uh, lemon is good for so and so condition within that so and so chakra it gives you a lot of basic information on how to affect your chakra and energy system through your food so yeah chapter um, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten are individual uh, chapters for the chakra. What, how to eat to affect that chakra, and like I said, it's for individual aspects of the chakra as well because the chakras are complex. Like for example, I have hip problems. I have to. There's something with how my joints are and sometimes that my hips aren't feeling too well but that doesn't necessarily mean that my entire uh, hara chakra is badly affected and within this book i might see that hmm, if i have this disturbance within this aspect of the hara chakra then i might want to do such and such and such without necessarily affect because i can have a lot of creativity and a lot of 
other aspects of the chakra can work perfectly, while another aspect doesn't, and this it this really go into depth. And of course, like with any book that goes into depth, it can be a bit it can be a heavy read. But I do think that it's written in such a way that it goes fairly well. It is a bit scholarly, but not so much that you just get a headache from reading it. So I think it's fairly well written. Now, let me see. And then you have uh, a chapter that's usual uh, questions, basically a Q&A section, which is okay. It's useful. But it's not very big, so it, it's not basically, it, that's just a little bonus. And then we have recipes. And um, th those are good. They're not a whole lot of them. It's a fairly small portion of the book, which are recipes. So, um, but basically there's some recipes for, me for each chakra. And then we have a um, menu suggestion that balances the chakras, that is also quite useful, basically just a menu that will give, that basically works on all the chakras and is basically a good menu to use if you need to balance your chakra. And I've considered doing that, just taking a week or two and just following that to just balance my energy system because I think I can need it. And then we have one uh, chapter about um, uh, uh, need, uh, name. Um, actually, I think that will be a difficult one to translate. So, basically, about what sort of foods and substances wear your chakras down. This is very useful. Basically, what foods are bad for your chakra? That's quite useful. And then we have one that is um, what sort of foods are balancing on your chakras, basically what foods are good for your chakras. Then we have one that is um, the, how the chakras correspond with various foods. And then there are one section with various forms of health problems and the like that can be associated with the chakras and how to identify them. And then there are a bibliography with suggested reading. And there is an um, index here which is quite useful. Now, do I like this book? Yeah, I do. I was uh, quite skeptical when I saw it because I was thinking, is this just gonna be recipes and lists over Carrots are good for the ro uh, for the Hara chakra because it's orange. Um, yellow paprika is good for the uh, solar plexus because it is yellow, and so on and so forth. No, this there's very very little of this. There are each chakra is described in depth. There are there are some lists, but really the book goes in so much depth. I really really like it. Now, it can be a bit scholarly, it can be a, sometimes a little bit jumbled, and I also think that to a certain degree the book spends too much time on the basics of the chakras, because if you are buying a book about chakra food, chances are you know the basics of the chakras already. Because basically you buy a book about the basics of chakras, and then later if you get interesting in the chakra system you buy a book about how to eat according to the chakras you don't start with a book that about how to read according how to eat according to the chakras so yeah but really I don't have any real complaints about the book it's good I um, definitely think, think it's quite useful and I recommend it so yeah I think I've been very interested in kitchen magic and I definitely see how I can incorporate this. And I do think that everything we do has magic in it. 
And I think that if we limit ourselves to only seeing magic when we are in ritual, then depending on how often we worship or how often we are in ritual, we might then limit our experience of magic to 20 minutes a day, an hour a day, 20 minutes, two times a month, I don't know how often you do it. And I think that that... I think that the more magic we do, the stronger we get. And basically, that's not a lot of magic. I think that if you can incorporate magic in every part of your life, infuse your life with it, then you will get better and better at it quicker. And I also think that magic should be practical. And we all have to eat. So when we incorporate magic and spiritual practice also into our food, and that is a very quick and easy way to get magic into everyday life. And I also think that we can really, that what we take in is a very big aspect. So it is energy. Like, for example, in Taoism, um, they believe that food is just energy. That food is qi. That we consume. That quite a m lot of our chi we just draw in from the universe but quite a bit of it we get from consumption of food and water and so on that's why in some Taoist teachings uh, where the goal is to become a Hishan uh, when you have reached a certain level you start meditating every day and you draw a breath and you try to circulate the energy of that breath until you don't need to draw a breath again because your energy system has been completely um, self-refilling um, so you'll never have to eat, drink or draw breath again and still be alive of course now and at that point it is believed that you have achieved perfect immortality now so yeah just like I see that an illness, let's say I I break my finger, then it, that is believed that that's just a um, symptom, a uh, manifestation of some blockage of energy in me that sort of caused that finger to be broken. And just the same way, food is just ways to, to get chi because we use much more chi than we usually draw in. This is also the basics of those that eat light. There are some people that hardly eat. They eat light. That's what they consume and they live on it. And it's the same concept. Food is energy. And when we consider that, that food is energy, using that energy more uh, consciously, knowing how these various forms of energy, which food is, will affect our energy system can be very very useful so yeah I really like this book I think it's very very useful both for people who are into the whole chakras energy systems new age and that sort of thing and also for people interested in the cult and witchcraft in general so yeah I really recommend this book I am very glad I got it and that is Chakra Math by Diana M. Minich. Minich? Minich, I think it is. And let me just check again what the English title was. Because most of you that I have on my uh, subscribers list speak English. And that is uh, Chakra Foods for Optimum Health. I'll give this book a 9 out of 10. I hope you have enjoyed this video, have a great day, and blessed be.